All right, so where we last left off, we got, well, where we last left off mechanically on Tahiti here, we got the stabilizer bars installed and the last kind of brake suspension upgrade that I have, at least for right now, is gonna be the brake upgrade, which is not happening in today's video. Yeah, so I finally got the powder coating that I was waiting for to get these brakes all cleaned up and really make them friggin' shine and look good on Tahiti here. So that is gonna be coming next video. But today I'm kind of trying to beat the weather because we have snow right around the corner. And as a matter of fact, it's supposed to be snowing right now. And I like to get some kind of undercoating applied to this thing, at least to the frame to try to protect it from the road salt and the winter that uh, lies right around the corner. So what we're gonna be doing is pretty much just cleaning the frame up as best as I can, and then applying like a wax coating over it. All right, so this is the pressure washer I'm gonna be using. It's a 2800 PSI um, gas unit. I have an electric one that's around 16, but according to the instructions for this uh, attachment I picked up, it said it works best with anything over 2500. So I just got this generic uh, attachment from Amazon. They make these in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. They got like big wheels on them, small wheels. I got this one because I figured I could probably use it on the Camaro too because it's like low profile enough. But it pretty much just clipped right onto my pressure washer uh, wand. I didn't have to put any adapters or anything on it. And all we're gonna do is wheel this right underneath the heater here, full blast, and just try to clean up whatever loose uh, grit and grime is kind of hanging off the bottom of the truck in the frame. Then to kind of help along the pressure washer, I'm gonna pre-coat everything with some super clean. So I'm just gonna put this in a uh, spray bottle, spray down the sides of the frame. Um, pretty much everything that I'm going to be applying the coating to. And then we'll come in with the wand, get everything rinsed off. I'll let it sit a day because it's pretty cold out. And I don't think this is gonna be completely dry until at least tomorrow. And then we'll start applying the coating. All right, so all the cleaning's done. I pretty much just focused everything from here back. Um, I kind of rinsed the inside of the wheel wells, but you guys know when I did uh, the shocks and everything and I had the wheels off, I pour 15 and undercoated this front of the part of the frame to the front and pretty much from here in the wheel well. Now that's not to say I'm not going to still apply some of this stuff 
but I'll probably do it when we're doing the brakes and I got the wheels off. I'll just coat over what I already did with the, uh, the wax coating that I got. But yeah, this thing seemed to work pretty good. I ended up just going straight at it with the, uh, the pressure washer nozzle itself because I could get a clear shot at the side of the frame here, really blast all that stuff off. A lot of just like brown water came off. So I know I got this pretty damn clean. Same in the back here. I just kind of laid down, hit what I could, and then just to rinse any remaining dirt and soap that I missed, that's when I came in with this thing. And you know, it works pretty good. It doesn't have a ton of pressure, but for what it is, it'll definitely be good if you're trying to get like uh, mud or salt out from underneath the vehicle. As for like high pressure, like trying to shoot like caked on grease and oil off of the frame, this isn't gonna cut it. You're gonna have to go under there and just uh, hit it dead on with the nozzle itself. So it's about 40 degrees out right now. I'm gonna let this thing sit overnight. Hopefully by tomorrow, um, everything is gonna be nice and dry so we could start applying that coating. All right, so it's the next day. We had a few flurries last night, but nothing significant. And it looks like everything dried up pretty well. Frame is incredibly clean. I mean, we have nothing left on there. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think this stuff's gonna stick pretty well. All right, so for the coating we're gonna be using, I picked up this RP342. This is a wax coating. So it's not like a spray paint where it's going to completely cure. Um, and the benefits to that is it's gonna be fast and easy. Honestly, I was considering pour 15 in the entire frame and, uh, or you know coating it with some kind of paint or something more permanent. But the thing is, this thing already has 200 something thousand miles on it. It's already been in the elements. It has surface rust on it. You know, the frame is in great condition. It's not flaking or anything, but to go through the effort to try to clean that frame and prep it with the body on the vehicle and really get a nice uh, coating with like something permanent like pour 15, um, it's going to be really difficult. And if the prep isn't good, it's going to just come back, bite me in the ass and everything's gonna, you know, flake off. But you can spray this directly over rust and it does remain somewhat malleable as I'll show you in this little demonstration where it doesn't completely dry out or dry up like a regular spray paint. So right here, I just have, uh, it's not pour 15 obviously, but just a gloss black uh, spray paint. And you can see it's completely dry. I could scrape it with my nail, it's pretty tough, and it's not gonna come off. Whereas with the RP342, you can already see I have a little a few test spots here. Come in your fingernail and scrape it off. And you're probably wondering, well, that's not good. Why, would you, why does that matter? Why do you want that? Well, the point is, you can see the coating, it remains soft and just a little bit sticky to keep that, uh, that rust and that moisture out. And the benefit to this is gonna be if this gets um, any rock chips in it, it's just gonna kind of leave a little nick in the coating, a little dimple. Whereas with this, if it's uh, a big enough rock or a strong enough impact, or this is old enough where it dried out enough, it's just gonna flake off in that area. And then the rust is gonna get back at the frame, it's gonna start flaking off and it's gonna be a giant mess. So GM actually does use um, wax coatings on their frames. A lot of people seem to have mixed feelings about it. I mean, mine made it to, this thing's 17 years old, it's got 244,000 miles on it. Most of that coating is completely dried up and gone at this point, but the frame is still is in pretty good shape. There's no like flaking of rust coming off the frame or anything like that. It's still in pretty good condition. And just as one more demonstration, I'm just gonna whack this with a pry bar. You see right away how easily the spray paint just kind of comes off in big chips. Whereas with this, the RP342, it just leaves a little divot where the wax just kind of gets pushed out of the way. Whereas with the spray paint, it literally, it just, the impact, it cracks the, the coating and it just flakes it away. And then, yeah, you're gonna have rust come in here. It's gonna grab underneath those loose uh, corners of that chip and it's, it's just gonna completely make a mess. This 
sucks. All right, so I think I'm pretty much done applying the coating. What a friggin' mess that was. I just had to go take a shower. I had to use rubbing alcohol to try to get this stuff off my hands, off my face. Eventually I decided to use a face mask with goggles, with the hood on, and that managed to keep a lot of the drip and stuff off me. Um, if I do need to reapply this stuff next year, I'm probably gonna try my hardest to source a lift because you're just under there like. However, the deed is done. And I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. It, you know, it has a nice satin black finish. It looks like a factory coating. I got some overspray on stuff. You know, you, you just can't avoid it. But in the end, uh, the best method to apply this is just to use the straw that it comes with because that really just kind of shoots it right in the direction you want. Um, using the straw allowed me to get it all the way up, like on the floor itself, past the frame, like kind of above the gas tank a little, really just in the little crevices that you're not gonna be able to get just by spritzing it in there. And I did come in here and hit the inside of the rocker. You know, I got it on the AC lines, the heater lines and stuff, but whatever, can't really uh, avoid that unless you really wanna go all out and cover everything. I decided not to hit the axle just because that is gonna be addressed eventually for a uh, rebuild and I decided, you know, we're just gonna leave it for now and then I'll come back and uh, clean it up when the time comes. And I did have enough, I actually had uh, two cans left over so I managed to kind of spray it up and get the floorboard, kind of the transmission tunnel. Uh, the body itself really wasn't too rusty. It had a little surface rust like on the, the, the fold overs where the floorboards are um, uh, welded together like uh, spot welded together. So I hit that really good. And then uh, being I had so much, I just decided to go and hit the floor as well. But the frame is pretty much completely coated. Like I said, I didn't hit the front. So from the cross member forward, that cross member comes out and I'm gonna do all that once the engine's out. So I decided not to really waste my time right now. The, the main concern is like the body here, back behind the axle where it gets hit with the most salt and crap. But uh, yeah, th this stuff went on pretty good. It's really, really messy, but I do like the finish. And what I actually ended up doing before I applied it uh, to the side here, I came in here with a screwdriver and I scraped off some of the old coating that was left up here and the frame underneath was mint. There was no rust, it was just bare metal. So um, as old as it was, even the little bits that were hanging on, they still, uh, it didn't allow water to get through and rust that frame. So I think this stuff is actually gonna work out pretty good. And then I came in here as well and made sure to coat the inside of the rocker here, up here on top of the floor. I know the lighting is really bad, but uh, this is all nice and covered on both sides. Frame is on inside and out. Only thing that really hasn't been touched, and I'm not too concerned, of it right, concerned about it right now, is the inside of the frame. So at one point I am gonna have to uh, get something with a different nozzle where I could spray inside the frame. But like I said, this isn't in too bad condition. There's no real flaking going on here. It's just really surface rust. So I wasn't like too concerned about getting every little square inch of this coated. Um, but when I do have access to a lift and depending on how this works, this is kind of a test to see how this holds up until next year. Um, then I'll get more serious and uh, you know, look into an option for coating the inside of the frame as well. And jumping right back here again, I know you guys are gonna tell me uh, why didn't I take care of this disgusting hitch. This is coming off, I gotta get a beefier one anyway, so I'm not gonna even bother. Once um, we pull the bumper to do the body work, I'm gonna pop a new hitch on it, and then all this disgusting rust will just be gone. All right, and just like that, Tahiti is um, protected for the winter. So as always, I'm gonna link the RP342 down in the description. I looked back into my account, it cost me a hundred bucks for six cans. And even though I have two left over, remember I didn't do the wheel wells front and rear because I did those um, when I was doing the, the shocks and all that stuff, I put the pour 15 and the undercoating over it. So if you're doing the entire frame, uh, you're definitely gonna want those six cans. And in my case, it was pretty easy to clean everything up. I'm gonna put the, uh, the pressure washer attachment down there as well, because my frame was actually in really good shape. Once again, um, mine didn't have like 
like heavy flaking that you usually get like on the pickup trucks up here in the northeast so it was really just clean off the dirt and um, apply the coating but if you have that heavy kind of scale flaking off you're going to want to go under there kind of just tap away at it with like a, an air chisel will work to kind of shake it off the frame otherwise you're going to spray this stuff on you're going to go down the road you're still going to have flakes coming off and then it's just going to expose rust underneath and your coating is going to fall away with it as for um, ppe i definitely recommend use some goggles um, i had some um, safety goggles just really big things i put on my face along with a face mask and i put my hood up because that overspray gets friggin everywhere use some old clothes i had to throw away the pants i was wearing because they were just sticky with overspray and yeah if you're doing this without a lift you're just under there just you can't stand to the side like if you're doing it on a lift so it gets extremely messy um, if i didn't mention that already and that's also the reason why i didn't have much footage of me spraying it because uh, the gopro got covered in it and i had to use rubbing alcohol to get it off and i wasn't going to take this camera under there so um yeah she's coated it, it went on really good if you guys have experience with this product or something similar definitely leave a comment down below let me know how it worked out for you but from the googling that i did and the videos that i watched on youtube reviewing it it seems to be a pretty damn good product but uh, going into next year well last video for this year i'm going to try my hardest to get that brake video out because we're going to be powder coating all the brakes upgrading front pads uh, rotors rear pads and rollers uh front calipers remember we're doing that 2020 um four piston upgrade on the front for the calipers and then going into next year there's gonna be more trans amp stuff i'm pushing to get that car done um, we're going to be doing interior stuff on this. This thing's getting boosted. It's getting a transmission swap. And then um, springtime is when we're going to jump into the body work because uh, it, it's cold now. It doesn't make sense for me to try to do it. Plus, there's so much other stuff to do. The body work should be the last thing to make everything look pretty. And uh, with that being said, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you in a few days.